Star Las Vegas, and welcome to Face the Tribune with the legendary Rolando LaRosse. I am your co-host, Chris Garcia. We're back. How you feeling today, Rolando? I'm feeling great. Wow. I'm feeling good. I just wanted to know who can be more important than me than uh, my executive producer cannot be here <laughs> while I'm doing the job. <laughs> why can he, why can she be here? <laughs> She don't answer me. She doesn't me. <laughs> what does that mean? Okay. Anyway, look, let me tell you. I don't know what that means, but whatever it is, it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, good. Yeah. Good. Oh, oh you're waiting for me? Yeah. Oh. I don't know about you, but I tell you, I um, I think that the media is giving too much publicity to this killer mm -hmm. in Ohio. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why wasting so much ink and so much airtime mm -hmm. and sh so much energy publicizing. You know what's going? In my opinion, you know what's going to happen now. What? It's going to be about two or three more people that uh, are yeah. going to be doing yes the same thing. Yeah. The media should not yes. have done what they did. Yes. Facebook was wrong by allowing that thing to be put on the air. Mm -hmm. I think I'm not uh, an expert on that. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wanted to ask your opinion. Because I don't see any good reason for this to happen. Yes. Now, I wanted to hear what you have to say. I agree with you. Uh, I mean, I agree with you. I think it leads to copycat people. They see that they get they can get famous. They the get all that exposure. The, the the what is known the fifteen minutes of our fame. Absolutely, fame. I agree with you. I agree with you. I think they're giving too much. You know, it's what I mean. He did what he did. He committed suicide, and that should be the end of the story. But to continue, no. But even it, before that, yes. Before yes. that, yes. just because he killed somebody yes. on the air, yes. He was looking for that kind of publicity. Yes, you're right. Absolutely. I think, right. I don't know. Uh, uh, you know how I feel about social media yes. and all that. Yes. I don't, uh, I don't understand. I think you're absolutely right. But I thought it was too much. Too much. Too much. Yeah. Three days they've been yeah. talking about that Steve, whatever his other yeah. name was. Yes. You know. He you know that, of course? See him, please? The, what? the Facebook killer that shot the uh, gentleman in Cleveland. But then I'm, I wanted to get his name too. I was the Steve. Something. Steve Stevens. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, a shame. <coughs> uh, I'm published to find out a little background on him or something like that. Yeah, that's a shame though. Yeah. Steve Stevens. Yes. Have I ever been wrong? Never. Yeah. Yeah. No. Have I ever been wrong? What did they say about him, Sierra? <laughs> Dead. Police say... Dead? That's what they say. He committed suicide. Steve Steven is the so-called Facebook killer who sparked a multi-state manhunt after he brazenly gunned down a Cleveland man at random, killed himself Tuesday morning in Pennsylvania, as cops closed in, authorities said. Stevens was spotted in a McDonald's parking lot in Erie County just after 11 a.m. by a number of the police who quickly contacted Pennsylvania State Police. After two-mile chase, troopers attempted to pit maneuver to dis disable Stevens' vehicle. The vehicle was spinning out of control from the pit maneuver. Stevens pulled a pistol and shot himself in the head, a state police Facebook statement said. Right. They were going to kill him anyway. So. We have closure. <laughs> it says we have closure in regards to the search for Stevens and Stevens. 
did he really commit suicide yeah. or you think they killed him like that? Well, why the car was spinning, he committed suicide? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> That's the point. She said, "You think he committed suicide while the car was spinning around?" Yeah, I, 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 that's what it's saying. Yeah, I doubt it. It's saying while the car was spinning that he shot himself. I'm sure he got when shot. The car was, and the car did crash, and so that means he was in control. Right. That's a good point. This is law and order. I'm telling you, it's yeah. Yeah. I, they were gonna kill him. I don't see. Because of all the publicity. Publicity, yes. Publicity. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, I was talking about the... I was talking about the... Electron fraud. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know what the Kevin Malone, the public information office for the... DMV in Nevada explained that to us over here, mm -hmm. then uh, it was not uh, any wrongdoing with <coughs> the no wrongdoing with them giving the application to people to register to vote and uh, it's up to the election department to verify why wasting all that time, energy, and manpower mm -hmm. making people fill up an application then it, it technically it should be uh, void. Yes. I don't yes. think they need yes. to have. And you know, you'd be surprised how many of these uh, how many of these uh, uh, government Entities, what is wrong with my chair? Oh, this uh, beyond. And this uh, uh, and government entities like the welfare, they make you register to vote, even if you, if they know that you are not an American citizen, mm -hmm. even if they know that you are here illegal. Mm -hmm. They make you register to vote. Mm -hmm. Most of those and uh, those government entities, most of them are controlled by the Democrats. Yes. They are. Uh, yes. It's not uh, any excuse. Mm -hmm. It's not any running around or anything. Most of them are controlled by Democrats. Yes, and every time I talk about this, I ask the same question: Why? are the black people so infatuated with the Democrat Party when the Democrat Party have never done anything for them? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. You're more intelligent than I am, and you are a little bit blacker than I am, and uh, you are uh, a very, very uh, knowledgeable human being. Even way back, the Democrats didn't save the blacks from slavery. No, I don't know who the why. Eh? They were the slave owners, the Democrats. They were? They were the slave owners. Okay, so why is, the, the, why is it that the black community, the majority, I'm not going to put everybody in, in the same category, but why do they have to be so narrow-minded and infatuated with the Democrat Party. It doesn't make any sense to me. Okay? And they, they are all... And all they doing, in my opinion, mm -hmm. and I, I can be wrong, even if I have never been before, mm -hmm. uh, I believe that what they're doing is they give you a little bit, they give you a little bit, but nothing else. They give you a little bit of the charity, I think. You know, they give you a little paycheck, 
they give you a look um, yes. to keep you happy mm -hmm. and that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They abuse it mentally, economically, financial and even sometimes physically they abuse it. The blacks, mm -hmm. the Democrats are controlled by a bunch of arrogant mm -hmm. uh, individuals mm -hmm. that they assume, erroneously of course, that they poo poo don't, don't stink. Yeah. And uh, it is not, that's not the case. You know, that's why I wonder why are they allow the Democrats to play games with, with yes. their future. You're right, you're right what you say, but the Republicans made a fatal mistake, and that is this. Neither party, and I've always believed this, cares about the plight of African Americans or Hispanics. I don't think neither party does. But I think where the Democrats were smart is that the Republicans back in the in the 1860s behind Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves. But when you free a person, then what do they do after that? And that was the problem is that just because they're free, they're not educated, they don't have any money, they don't have any property. Of course, just because you free them, the white people in this country still look at them as animals or second-class citizens. So you can't just free somebody. You have to free them and then back them up economically. And they did. Yeah, but let me ask you. It doesn't uh, make any sense if you are free that you can be free to educate yourself and uh, to go to school. I mean, I can tell you, hey, the door is open. Go. I cannot control what you're doing uh, when the door is open and you leave this place. You know, maybe you was used to be told what to do, but now you have to learn. But if they're going to keep telling you what to do and how to do it, then it's almost like uh, you've, been, you've been controlled by somebody, Democrat or Republicans or Independent or anything. People have to learn to help themselves. Yes. I believe that yeah. way. You know, if you want to, to, like in my case, I wanted to be able to operate a computer, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to learn how to work the product. First of all, I have to know how to turn the computer on. I know. I don't know. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and then you ask questions. Yeah. And you are free now. You can ask all the questions yeah. you want. It doesn't mean you're going to have all the answers in your space. But you have the answers if you ask questions. And uh, that is uh, the basic of my point. Yeah. They give you the freedom. I don't know if it might make sense or not. No. They, make, they give you the freedom, but if they're going to keep telling you how to yes. do things, uh, it's almost like you still control. I think that I grew up seeing that growing up in the South Side of Chicago in a minority community. The problem is, and I've always believed this, and I've made a lot of African Americans mad when I say this. They were free, but a lot of people kept the slave mentality. They never let that go. They believed they needed help from master still. And the Democrats were still sitting there saying, come on, we'll take care of you. They never, my dad raised me. I don't want to hear about race. Race has nothing to do with you going to school and getting good grades. Right. But, but, I, but other people in my community, their parents didn't teach them that. Their parents teach them that the government owed them something. And a lot of minorities, black and Hispanic, think the government but I owes tell you, them something. I tell you, I know a lot of black mm -hmm. that are intelligent, yes. are innovative, Absolutely. and uh, even if they might par even if their parents didn't teach them yeah. that, they learn yeah. 
how to be independent and how to, uh, I know a lot of black people then uh, have freed themselves from society, yes, yes. not from this slavery, from society. Yes. And I tell you, I think... Uh, the dirty little secret, Rolando, there's more white people on welfare than it is black people. So not only are black people dependent, a lot of black people, there are well, a lot of white, but, more white people dependent on the, on the U.S. government. A lot. Well, that could be, that's possible, yeah. because uh, most blacks are working. Even if they are low-budget no, job, job yeah. and they are working. You can walk into the welfare office yeah. and everybody <laughs> there is black. They all getting a paycheck. Look at the bus drivers. Look at the, the trash men. All, all of them are black. You're right. You're right. Yeah. They are working. Yeah. You know, so, and I tell you, I learned of a case just uh, over the, the end of last week, a man that worked as a cook in one of these street hotels. Getting a fairly good paycheck, mm -hmm. getting two meals, sometimes three meals, mm -hmm. and uh, they give him five hundred dollars in food stamp. Wow! Now I got a friend, American citizen. That guy is a Mexican. Okay. I have a friend, is black, born and raised in Las Vegas, and they offer him $26 in food stamp. That is an insult. That's that, one meal, huh? That <laughs> is an insult. That's one meal. And then I agree with him, he gave it back to yeah, me. Yeah, I wouldn't I mean, Okay, I there's it. another black man than a in born and raised in Las Vegas, and they are giving him a hundred dollars in food stamp, the average of three dollars a day, and a meal, three dollars a day for a meal, a little bit more than three dollars, okay? And uh, now this Mexican, I granted, he became an American citizen, he is legal in the country. He might have all the rights in the world, but I believe he's abusing mm -hmm. the system mm -hmm. by getting $500 in food stamp and the government don't do nothing. Wow. You know, I hear people say, well, look at all these people. They go to the world fair in a, in a, in a car like a fancy car. Well, they might got those cars when they was working. They might have those cars when they was in a better shape. Welfare is not something that it should be forever. Yeah. It is a help while you get another That's job. Right. And uh, what are you going to do? Sell your car because they, because you lost your job? Sometimes they make you. They do? I think so. I think wow. I've heard of that. I don't know for sure. I don't know the facts on that. But they say, well, you got the tiny car, why don't you just sell that? Well, because uh, probably I owe more than what they're coming up to. <laughs> That's why. And then I'm going to be inside a car mm -hmm. to to go from point A to point B, yes. and uh, and I still have the debt. Yeah. Because the, the finance company no, is not going to give you yeah. a break just because you are... Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't... But no, uh, I hear that before. They force you to sell something. Yeah. Right. I just, it's always been amazing to me how one of the number one things when you're an applicant to get on welfare is that they don't want the father to be in the home. So that's telling you right there. They're going to keep you on welfare. If the father is in the home, they come after the father for child support. And of course, most of those guys don't have jobs, so what do they do? Well, they feel like it's better for me to not be here, and at least you get food stamps and some sort of support. I always believe, That's a shame. I always believe that the government teach people or force people to lie. Yes. They make good lives out of the people. 
because people have to ingenuity mm -hmm. uh, create his own yeah. uh, what do you call his own a scenario mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to be able to access what rightfully belongs to them. Yeah. You know, if you don't, have, what I don't understand is why those people that are in welfare, and I'm not talking about the seniors, well, seniors are normally not in welfare, right? right, right. They are in other yeah. Other names, uh, I don't know, Medicaid, probably, they eh? Medicaid. whatever, yeah. they call them something else, but it's still the same. Yeah. But people that are in a working age, and they allow them to stay in welfare for years, without even force them to go to a training school, or to, what do you call it? Uh, uh, they don't call them training, but they teach you how to be trade a, school. Trade school. Yes. A trade school. Yes. You know, get another job. Are you a carpenter? You cannot get a job as a carpenter. Become a painter. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's why uh, the government should be doing that. Mm -hmm. I was surprised when I learned that the what do you call that prisoner over here? Uh, Producer, what do you call this person over here on the... It's about... Smiley six, Road. Eh? Smiley Road. No, that's the girls. Okay, uh, I don't know. The other one uh, is about 60 miles Indian, from... In, Indian... High Desert. High Desert. They used to have a shop over there that teach the inmates how to fix car, mm -hmm. how to upholstery, mm -hmm. and I understand they, they took those things off now. They don't wow. teach anything. Why? Wow. And at least somebody that is going to spend three, four, five years in there for a crime, they learn a trade and they can get out and become a little bit more of a service to society. Mm -hmm. You know, now I understand they, the inmate cannot even uh, get out of the cells on the weekends because they don't have enough guards, no? Am I wrong? I High Desert is a camp for that they train them to be firefighters or to, to, to fight fire. Well, there's two of them. Oh, okay. there. It's High Desert and it's uh, Indian I, Creek, right? Yeah, I, don't know. I don't know the other one. But the other ones are up north. All the other ones are up north. No, but I'm talking about the one over here. They keep the inmates in the weekend, they keep them locked up because they don't have enough guards. Wow. Why are people not... Oh, and you don't have to make appointments anymore for visiting. You yeah. go, eh? I don't believe that. I think security is higher now than it used to be. But I don't believe that you don't... You well, have to get approved just to be a visitor. Right. You've been approved for one, and then you can go every time there's a visit. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. That, now that they, that don't have, uh, they don't have... They don't have appointments. They don't have time to get in. Mm -hmm. It's enough... It's, it's a certain amount of people that can get in. Mm -hmm. I know... A, I know a guy that went to see his brother mm -hmm. and he had to get there at four o'clock in the morning because, because, it's they, a long line and they because uh, if uh, they get to the amount of people mm -hmm. that they gonna let in, you don't get to visit. Wow. I mean, just because you committed a crime, just because you are incarcerated, doesn't make you not being human, okay? Right. They, they need That's to right. have a little more consideration. Right. And uh, let's face it, there is a few people over there that don't deserve to be there. Yes. There's a few people in there that are not guilty of the crimes that they are accused of. Yes. They either been set up They've been framed, they've been lied about, or they just was sold out by their attorneys. It does happen. 
You're absolutely right. No, I don't think uh, that it is something that it should be that drastic. The same way that I don't think, I don't believe in death penalty. Mm. Mm. What? You do? That's great. Eh? I do. You believe in yes. death penalty? Why? Because you made the person suffer less? <laughs> I think that if you pulled it off the table, I don't know. Do you think, do you think, do you, do you think it does not detour people from killing people if, if they know, you know? Mm. A lot of, that's what a lot of people say. No. Wow. And I tell you, speaking for myself, mm. if I'm going to be locked up in a cell, 23 hours a day for any amount of time. It's worse than you think. Yeah, it's worse than Give me. Yeah. And I don't have to be locked <laughs> up in there like a cat <laughs> or like a dog. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't believe. Uh, yeah, I mean, I believe if wow. it's life in prison. Wow. Huh? What, if it's life in prison, if somebody has life in prison, there's no chance of them getting out. Why stay alive? Why pay for them? Yeah. yeah. Wow. No, I don't believe in it. Some of those people are in, a, what do you call that? A high, uh, when they keep you 23 hours a day. Look what they do with John Gotti. Do you think John, well, no John Gotti now. Eh? John Gotti, the, that Mexican guy, then uh, escaped through a tunnel. That's that. A chapel. Yes. They keeping him 23 hours a day. Yeah. They keep the lamp light on. Wow. That's inhuman. Yeah, I'd rather be dead. I'd rather be dead than live. They don't let his Every wife. Day. Wow. His wife is an American born citizen. Mm -hmm. It's not because she become American. He was born in this country. Mm -hmm. All his kids are born in this country mm -hmm. and they don't allow her to see her husband. Wow. And I understand that in the Mexican prison because the guy make a fool out of them. Yeah. <laughs> twice, no one, yeah. twice. He's a maximum now. He ain't going well, He's a maximum, maximum prison now. He ain't going nowhere. He didn't do nothing wrong here. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they know he could pay people off in Mexico. He would get out again. But here, yeah, he's, well, he's not going anywhere here. Really? You don't think so? No, not here. No. Those, those people fight oh. extradition to the United States. You have no chance of paying off nobody here. You go to federal prison here, you're done. That was maximum security. You lie down 23 and a half hours a day. I know. That's what I'm here. Done. Yeah, you're done. Uh, he might as well kill He hasn't himself. even <laughs> been found guilty yet. That's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. He's not even been found guilty yet. He hasn't even been on trial. Right. Yeah. He hasn't even been charged yet. Yeah. yeah. And they're punishing him. I don't think that is fair. I really don't. So where do you think he should be right now? He should be waiting for for trial. If they're going to charge him, go ahead, charge him, and then allow the lawyer to talk to him, allow him to have a defense, because everybody's entitled to a fair defense. It's not going to be a good defense. It doesn't exist a good defense, a fair defense. Yes. And uh, it's like O.J. Simpson. He was found guilty over here for what the jury in California found him not guilty. I don't care if he was guilty or not. Mm -hmm. That's not the point. The point is that we have a jury system then we're supposed to accept those 12 people opinion or decision in a case that they 
just learn whatever the prosecution allow you to learn. They don't tell you, look at the case of Christine Lovato. Mm -hmm. You know, the judge decide not to, the judge decide not to, not to allow the jury to know that she was not in Las Vegas when the crime was committed. Yeah. How can the jury get a good ruling when um, they not allowed to know all the details of the case. Mm -hmm. So... What's going on with that? Have you heard anything about this? No. no, but I tell you, my friend Jessica Williams, I don't know if you're familiar with her case. Bit, yeah. She's the lady that uh, fall asleep. Oh, yeah. Fall asleep. And, work people. Uh, yeah. Work, yeah. And uh, the only reason that she's doing the horrible amount of time is because they want to clear the county of any kind of liability because the county should not have those minors working on the freeway or on the highway. I don't know what they call them. You know, I don't understand why uh, it had to be so many different uh, adjectives. Some Cities call them a freeway, some uh, call them expressway. Uh, make one word for the roads and uh, don't confuse people. How much time do they give? I don't know. It's about three, three sentences consecutive, mm -hmm. no concurrent. Wasn't it? What, how long ago was that case? I, well, she turned 21 in March, I, probably 2000, 2001. I think that, I think that she got two eight-year sentences. No, she got she's, she's been there for longer than that. And she just fell asleep. Mm -hmm. She smoked a joint, mm -hmm. and now these judges and these uh, campaign managers and uh, these uh, uh, police mm -hmm. narcotic officers, they all selling the marijuana now. This girl is smoking a joint in Valley of the Fire, Fire of the Valley, or whatever. Name again? Jessica Williams. Jessica yeah. Williams. What do you call that place? The Fire Park, of Valley Park. Valley of Fire? Yes. How far is from here? Uh, like 30 minutes, 40 minutes. That's it? Mm -hmm. It's not far. Not an hour? It depends on how you drive. <laughs> I've gotten out there in like 40 minutes before. Okay, 30, 40 oh, 40 minutes. Minutes. Yeah. okay. Yeah. She's smoking joint over there while she was there. And she drove 40 minutes. How long a high last? Are you familiar with A few hours. Marijuana? A few hours? A few hours? If you get some good, really. Marijuana. So that's a that's a cheap uh, way of getting high, right? It is. Well, yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, fine. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I think uh, that the effect in uh, 40 minutes an hour uh, is not the same effect as when you smoke it. And, uh, I think everybody is different because if you've been doing it for a while, you've got high tolerance. So it might get me high, but it hurts. You might have just been buzzed a little bit and probably the high wore off pretty quick yeah. if you've been doing drugs. And I tell time. you, this is one thing that I keep telling people, and I can be wrong. Yeah. I don't, I, luckily for me, I've never been in that situation. Mm -hmm. uh, the highway patrol asked her, if she has any drugs, I don't know how the conversation went back, but I interviewed her in the detention center. Yes. I went there and met with her twice, mm -hmm. and uh, I, the highway patrol asked her, and she said, yes, we smoke a joint and the body of fire or whatever mm -hmm. that place is. And he said, do you have any more drugs, any more dope? 
And uh, she said, yeah, I got a, a dime bag or something, nickel bag. I don't remember what the, the amount was, but it was just uh, whatever. Yeah. And the highway patrol asked her, can you go get it for me? Her van was parked, like, uh, from here across the street. Mm -hmm. And the highway patrol asked her, can you go get it? If he would have seen her in pair, he would have told her. To he would not tell her to go and get the, the marijuana out of the van. Wow. I don't think uh, they would have been that dumb. No. Wow, that's a good point. Wow. You're smart. You would be very smart. That's true. Wow. Hmm. Of course, I am sure that by now, the highway patrol has changed, yeah, changed the mind. story. Yeah. And he has said, no, yeah. I did not. <laughs> right. Oh, oh. No. Wow. So when you interviewed her, she told you that's what he did? He told her to go get the weed? Yeah. Wow. And I tell you one thing, I have never seen anybody, anybody more resentful of what happened that that girl. That girl is being punished every day in her own mind, in her own man, in her own brain for what she did. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you the half of that girl belong to the county of Clark. Because those children mm -hmm. should not be I first of all my opinion now is it's not and my she will be eligible for parole at age 39. When did it happen? It, it's, it's not saying how much she was sentenced on this one. It happened, she was sentenced February 16th of 2001. Yeah, yeah one, her birthday is in May, in May something. March or May, I can't remember right now. I think it's March 18th. So she was like 22, 23 when it happened. 21. She was 21. She was, she was 22 when she was sentenced. Okay. But it doesn't exactly say what her sentence was. Well, 22. So that means she was sentenced to 17 years. If she she was be. sentenced to more than that because when you're sentenced, you get good time off your yeah. sentence, so she was sentenced to more than that. She so was she's probably sentenced to 20, for 20 to life or something like that. You know, that's so when is she eligible for parole? When she's 39. So that would that's be... That's soon. That's like in a couple of years. It's like in a year or two. She'll be eligible for parole. If it happened at 21 in 2001, mm -hmm. 39, that's 18 years. So like 2019, she'll be eligible for parole. Wow. She has surgery last week. Uh -huh. She got, they found cancer. So, what? Yeah. I, that girl is, is an amazing person. Amazing. Channel know her. Oh. And uh, she is an amazing wow. human being. And she regret that day more I than I do more than uh, some of the mothers on those. First of all, my opinion, those kids were not kids. They were there punished for a crime they already committed. They were paying for a crime that they committed, so they were not that innocent kids. They were criminals, maybe low criminal, no high criminal, whatever you want to call them, but they committed a crime and they were paid. And I tell you, I met the teacher of a couple of those kids. Mm -hmm. I interviewed that teacher and she told me those kids go three, four, five days without even seeing their mother. I have never seen the mother of this kid in the school since I got back from summer vacation. Mm. And now they're sitting over there crying because they want money. That's what it is. God forgive me if I'm 
I'm exaggerating <laughs> or I'm making it. No, I think opinion. you're right. No, I, I don't. Think right. I don't think uh, it is because normally it's okay for somebody to bury the parent, but I think it must be a painful thing to bury your own child. You know, it's nothing. I think it cannot be. I don't have any kids, so I don't know how that can be. I know I cannot relate to that yeah. law, yeah. but uh, I believe that uh, it is uh, very, very difficult mm -hmm. to s go through losing a child. Yeah. But to me, those parents then they never pay attention to their children and, uh, and that's why I admire Billy that much. Billy is doing a fantastic yes, job does. with those kids. Yes, the, the, the parents are either yeah. in prison or they are in drugs or they are just doing whatever they want and he take those kids and put them over there and they look happy, they look healthy, they look, uh, to me... What's amazing, and I just want to I just want to go on your point, I, having a lot of kids myself, I have seven children, but... Are they all yours? Are they all mine? <laughs> and, and I've seen a lot of people with children that should not have them, and I know a lot of people that didn't have kids would have made excellent parents. I think you're one of them. I think you would have been an excellent father. I do because you're fair-minded, you're open. They can come talk to you about anything, and that's what a parent. That those are the best traits about a parent. And you'll fight for them, but at the same time, if you thought they was wrong, you would say you're wrong, and you would you would punish them if they were wrong. And I think that those are the best traits. But I think you would stand behind your kids all the way, and you'd be supportive of them. And, I think a lot of people that didn't have kids would have been really, really, really good parents. And Billy, he, like you said, I mean, the work that he does with those kids, yeah. unbelievable, man. Yeah. Unbelievable. And yeah. now he can even walk. Well, he's, on a, he's on a walker. Wow. I went to visit him the, the other day. Oh, wow. And uh, he's on a walker. He cannot uh, walk without a walker. I had a friend of mine. He passed away already. He was a, he was a good friend. He hung around my house. And he used to cook oh, uh, very, very good Cuban food, you know. <laughs> and uh, the people then uh, eat his food, uh, compliment him for it, you know. Not these people then... Uh, Eat the chicken and rice and don't say nothing. By the way, thank you, Curly. That was they don't see. They don't see. They don't comment anything about the quality of the chicken and rice. She's got a call. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. But she didn't say nothing, so I guess she didn't like it. But anyway, this guy, this guy that I used to know. His daughter was molested by the grandmother's boyfriend or husband. Mm -hmm. And uh, they used to come over to my house and uh, we were sitting by the pool and uh, she come to me and she said, can I talk to you? And I said, yeah, sure. You know, she said, uh, I want to tell you something, but you have to promise me that you're not going to tell anybody. I said, okay. And he told me that her grandmother's boyfriend was molesting her. Mm. Now, you can imagine, mm. I don't have children. Mm. I don't know a word about how to handle it. And I said, look, sweetheart. I know I told you, but you have to understand, I don't have any experience with this. I need to tell my friend 
and see what she said. We took the girl to the doctor. They give him, they give her all type of test. Mm -hmm. Gonorrhea, syphilis, mm -hmm. pregnancy, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, going through all that. Mm -hmm. And I beg the doctor not to call the police. I beg her not to call. She said, I cannot. I have to call. Otherwise, I lose my license. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that the, the doctors had that much mm -hmm. uh, control. Mm -hmm. They came. They arrested the guy. And uh, I was friends with the sheriff at that time. And we have a very good relationship, or I thought we have a good relationship, and uh, not like now, but uh, I told the guy is leaving, the guy went to pick up his paycheck, mm -hmm. his last check, mm -hmm. and he is flying out of Las Vegas. Oh, no, no, I got the three best detectives in this case. I know the father of the kid, and uh, the father of the kid was the only person in this city that was not afraid to put his, uh, what do you call that, uh, sticker in the, in the bumper sticker mm -hmm. with his name on where he was running for it. For sheriff, man. I said I know him, and uh, I'm doing my best. I got the three best detectives in the force. Well, they were three liars and three piece of garbage. Mm -hmm. That's it. The guy left Las Vegas, and he disappeared for three, four years until the status or limitation, whatever it was, five years, mm -hmm. three years, and. Uh, the guy never did one day, uh, one week in prison. He molested that girl, he molested her cousins, he molested all the girls in the family, all the girls, they were underage girls. And there was a, a, a Cuban guy that used to be a lawyer in Cuba and he was doing paperwork for another lawyer over here and he had the case and uh, a lady that used to work for Marlene uh, for for Rex Bell when Rex Bell was the district attorney and everything else And they did uh, everything to cover up, and they didn't make the guy, beside the fact that the mother of the child owed $5,000 to her mother, the girlfriend or the wife of the perpetrator, I don't know if I'm confusing you, but the grandmother the lady whose boyfriend or husband was molesting the children. The mother of my friend's daughter owed her, her mother $5,000 because she was a, a gaming, she was a, a gambling freak. She bet anything and everything. And uh, the mother said, if you don't press charges, I forget about the debt. And I told her, I said, you have, you just sold your daughter's virginity for a thousand, for five thousand dollars. Wow. We never talked anymore. Wow. Never talked. I don't know. Uh, the father of the kid is dead now. I don't know where the kid is. I, I never seen, uh, 
I never did. But then, to me, anybody they cover up for a child molestation or child abuse or, or, or anything like that, I'm glad I don't have a kid. Yeah. I'm glad. I always thank the good Lord that I don't have a kid because if anybody touched my kid like that, I would have taken the Lord in my own. Yes, I feel the same way. And Trust after me. that point, the where way. they tell me, oh, we cannot take care of this, we need to call the police. The police didn't do nothing. They do nothing. And they, when I told the sheriff, I called the sheriff at home, and I said, the guy is leaving tonight. Oh, no, no, he's not leaving. I got the three best detectives. Oh, boo. You know, it's... Uh, it's ridiculous. And I told him, I said, if it would have been your daughter, the guy would have never, especially a guy like that, they have 28 warrants for his arrest, for bullshit, and for, for traffic, and uh, not showing up in court. And, and he got 28. I said, if it would have been your daughter, you would keep that guy in jail. Absolutely. You are our lion, Rolando. What happened is you like everything your way. I said, no, it's not my way. Is it the right thing? No. We got about three minutes left, but it was it was something I was reading this morning, and I knew you would get a kick out of it. You always talk about how the Republicans in this state are fake. They're not really Republicans. So one of your favorite people, Dean Heller, has been. He supports Donald Trump. He, he made a big old statement the other day. He supports Donald Trump as far as the strikes against Syria. And he has voted to allow the states to decide what they want to do with Planned Parenthood, state by state. So he's in favor of the states determining themselves if they want to fund Planned Parenthood or not. And he voted against Yucca Mountain. He's against Donald Trump when it comes to Yucca Mountain. He doesn't believe that. Uh, him or Brian Sandoval. They don't believe that. Well, but I, let me I, correct. I know how much you do. Let me correct <laughs> you, my friend. He's not in Donald Trump's side. He's one of those Republicans that refuse to go to the National Conference yes, I know. or whatever you call yeah, I know the that. Convention. The yeah. convention. Because Sandoval, the rhino, the rhino governor of the state of Nevada so what can they wait one minute? Are they really that important people? More important than me than I'm paying you twenty million dollars. Get me out of the air. Make you get hysterical.